Okay, so when you have a cyclo group, um, this is the same as when you have a benzene or any other alkene. So one of the hydrogens, remember that each of these on the carbon skeleton is essentially filled with hydrogens to fulfill its bonds. So what you're going to do is you swap one of them out for a fluorine and the hydrogen then goes with the remaining fluorine. Okay, now if you have other things on your structure already, so other molecules or branches or different groups that happen to be on there, it actually has no impact on this reaction whatsoever. So here we have a benzene with a methyl group. You can replace any of those with your chlorine. So let's say I put my chlorine right here. It's the same thing. So when you're doing a substitution reaction, you can have a whole bunch of different stuff on your structure. Like I could have had, for example, a bromine on this uh, cyclopentane already. That bromine doesn't move. Like nothing else on this structure moves at all, except simply hydrogen swaps for a halogen. Okay, so the next type of reaction is kind of more of a category of reactions. So we're moving away from alkenes into now double and triple bonds. So alkenes and alkynes, al alkynes of molecules. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so uh, when you're looking at double and triple bonds, remember we're now getting into more reactive functional groups because the pi bonds that are found in double and triple bonds are actually much lower in energy for breaking than we have for that sigma bond. So meaning we can have a larger variety of reactions that are happening. So the category of reactions that we're going to be looking at now that involves these uh, double and triple bonds are called addition reactions. And it's kind of like what it sounds like. We're going to add in some atoms into our molecules. So anytime you're doing an addition reaction, what's happening is your double bond is going to break. So if you have a carbon-carbon double bond, this bond will break. And essentially, you're going to add in atoms to fulfill this new bonds that are available. So remember that carbon needs to have four bonds. So when you break a bond, it's allowing it to now have the ability to add in and bond with another atom. So the type of atom that is going to be added is actually going to tell us what type of addition reaction we're going to be doing. So we have halogenation. So what that means is we're going to be adding in halogens. Okay, so halogens. Hydrogenation means we are going to add in hydrogens. Hydrohalogenation means that we're going to add in one hydrogen and one halogen. It doesn't it can be fluorine or bromine or whatever it is. And then lastly, we have hydration which means we're going to be adding in a molecule of water. So when you are telling me the type of reaction, you have to be specific about the type of reaction. So you cannot just tell me, oh, addition reactions, because that's going to apply to a whole bunch of different types. So if I'm asking you for a type of reaction, I want to know specifically which one of these addition reactions are you discussing. So we're going to go through each one of these. So halogenation essentially means that we're going to add a halogen across a double or a triple bond. So what happens is the double bond will break and the halogen will essentially, uh, remember halogens always come in a diatomic, they will fill in the spots that the carbons now have available. So for example, we have ethene here where we have the carbon-carbon double bond and bromine. So this bond will break one bromine, right, so you can imagine it's like this, one bromine will go to one hydrogen, oh, pardon me, carbon, because it now has an available spot, the other bromine will go to the other side. So now we have one comma two dibromoethane. So notice that now it's become a single bond. If you have a double bond, it becomes a single bond. What about if I had a triple bond? Right? Plus, um, sure, why not? 
okay? So what happens here is this triple bond will break a bond, and the same thing will happen. A bromine will fill in each of these spots. Now, this will go down to a double bond. Right? So now we've went from a triple bond to a double bond. You can, however, have the ability to react this again. We can do an additional um, addition reaction, in this case, halogenation. So you can actually go directly from a triple bond into a single bond. So there's two ways that that's going to happen. We'll do another one here. So let's say we had... Um, a triple bond like this okay so how this is going to show well what if I want to react this now twice instead of going from a triple bond down to a double bond I want to make this go to a single bond so there's two ways this can either be shown by having more than one halogen so here if I have two bromines that means I'm going to break this essentially twice so what that would do is it would have my carbons with each of them having two bromines on it, right? So I went from a triple bond down to a single bond. We've broken that twice. The other way of showing this is if this is said to be in excess. So what that means is we have lots of bromine available to the point where it's going to continue reacting until it can no longer react. So if it has the ability to break two bonds, it will break two bonds. If it has, um, even let's say for example, let's say we had a different scenario here. Let's say we had a double bond and then another double bond. Okay, so let's say we had something like this with two double bonds and we have bromine in excess or if we had two bromines, that means it's going to break each of those bonds. So that means we're gonna have a bromine on each of the spots where we had our double bonds breaking. Okay, so just be mindful that if it's in excess or, of course, you have a coefficient indicating you have more than one of those halogens, you are going to keep reacting. Okay, so the next type of addition reaction is called hydrogenation. So hydrogenation is literally all of these addition reactions are the same thing. You're breaking a double bond or a triple bond to fill it then with other atoms. In this case, instead of adding a halogen, we're adding in hydrogen atoms. So this type of reaction does require a catalyst. So again, you are not required to know the specifics of it. But in case you see something written on top of an arrow, okay, so that typically means that there is something required for that reaction to become successful. Uh, so in this case, it actually requires um, uh, either platinum or nickel in, to be a catalyst for this particular process, but that's fine. When you're writing out your reactions, I don't expect you to do that. However, I do expect you to know what is happening in the reaction. So hydrogenation, right? You have hydrogens that are now being added, so we're going to break the bond and add in our hydrogens. Same thing if you have a triple bond, like the mechanism of this is exactly the same. So the same scenario that we just finished talking about is going to happen here as well, except it's just instead of adding hydrogen, uh, halogen, you're adding hydrogen. So um, this type of reaction actually is um, quite used quite often in the food industry. Uh, maybe not so much anymore because they try to not do this because it's not really the greatest for us, <laughs> but it happens. So if you've ever heard of the term a uh, hydrogenated oil or a hydrogenated fat. Uh, that's essentially what is happening. It is a, an oil or a fat that has gone under the hydrogenation process. Now, what does that mean? So you have something called saturated and unsaturated. 
An unsaturated hydrocarbon means that we have multiple bonds. So we have a double bond or a triple bond in our molecule. So what happens there, when you have double and triple bonds, it adds um, a little bit of uh, fluidity to your structure. There's more space between particles because it's not as, um, well, it's not as rigid, but um, there's a little, there's more room for movement. Uh, it's hard to explain, but every molecule is a little bit different. So you have typically unsaturated fats are in the liquid state. So there's more space between particles. So such as vegetable oils, um, olive oil. So different types of oils um, that are liquid at room temperature are due to their unsaturation. Saturated is a term for when you have every single bond being fulfilled with an atom. So you have carbon-carbon bonds that are all single bonds, and those carbons are filled with hydrogens. So these are called hydrogenated oils because what happens is they take an unsaturated fat and they add a hydrogen and they do this reaction and it becomes uh, then saturated. Here you go, you have a little hydrogen. Uh, so this now, you typically, are solids at room temperature. And these are also man-made, um, you know, I don't want to say, they're man-made fats. Like it comes from an original source, of course, uh, but they're hydrogenated to the point where they're making a new substance. So we have, you know, things such as margarine or Crisco, uh, like shortening. Um, so the natural... A uh, version of the shortening would be like a lard, so coming from um, saturated animal fats. So this is more like man-made saturated fats, not so much um, animal-based original, you know, from the animal <laughs> itself, uh, like uh, fat itself. But um, I'm probably explaining this a little bit weird. But anyways, saturated hydrogenated oils are not the greatest for you. When possible, if you're going to eat a saturated fat, it's better to eat a, a natural saturated fat that's found in egg yolks. And um, if you if you are okay eating meat um, from different meat products, um, things like shortening and uh, margarine are not really the greatest choice. It's actually better if you have maybe butter over margarine. But um, yeah. I'm not a dietitian. Should start out. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> That's just uh, in terms of trying to be uh, limit the number of chemicals that you sadly synthetically made products that you're ingesting. Sorry, that rant kind of went off on a tangent there. But anyways, so the term hydrogenation is because we're doing that reaction. We're doing a hydrogenation reaction. That was kind of the point. <laughs> okay, so this next block. Uh, maybe I'll start this on the next part. Uh, we're going to look at something known as unsymmetrical addition. So, so far, what we've looked at is you're either adding halogens, right? So, for example, um, bromine atoms to uh, a double bond or triple bond, or we've looked at hydrogens in hydrogenation. So, both of those are known as symmetrical addition reactions. So, meaning you're adding the same type of atom. So it's either been two halogens or it's been two hydrogens. The next two addition reactions we're gonna look at are known as unsymmetrical additions. So we have hydrohalogenation. So for example, this is where you're adding a hydrogen and a halogen atom or water. So water, when you have an addition reaction, it actually separates into, uh, and as you know, water is really hydrogen and hydroxide when you have a displacement reaction. Same thing happens here. So when we have water, it really will separate into hydrogen and hydroxide. So why is this not symmetrical? You're not adding the same atom. You have hydrogen and hydroxide or hydrogen and bromine. Whereas up here, you're adding the same atom in twice. So it's a little bit of a different mechanic when you're adding an unsymmetrical uh, substance.